This predator had some gory fantasies. From cutting up his victim to tasting blood, these are some of the most physical moments on To Catch a Predator. To start off with, we have one of the darkest predators to ever be seen in the history of the entire show, for what this man was going to do is just pure evil. He had the, the bolt back and the magazines, all he had to do was tap them in. 41-year-old Todd Spike went by the screen name Loves to Eat Your Peach, and as disgusting as his screen name sounds like, the man's ideas were even more sinister. With every other predator that I come across, it surprises me how one can surpass the other in the level of obscenity. So coming back to Todd, this man chatted regularly for a month with a decoy who claimed to be 13 years old. Although he was surprised that she was just 13, it didn't stop him from calling her a little hottie. If you thought that was suggestive, what he did next will make you detest him. Todd was pretty sure of what he wanted from the girl. It had nothing to do with chatting online. The demented man had a set plan in place, and the very first step in executing his devious scheme was to send the innocent teen pictures of him off. As awful as that sounds, trust me, it looked even worse. But just when you think he derived pleasure by winking his in front of the young girl, the man surprises you with a little more than that. And this time, he had a specific request to make. During the chat, Todd made his wish very clear to the decoy. He wanted to watch her perform oral on another man. The kind of fetishes maniacs like him have never ceased to surprise me. But the decoy had a valid question to make. Where would this other man come from? But Todd had a ready answer for everything. It was as if he was already used to the drill. In response to her innocent question, Todd said that he would go to the mall and get a random man and bring him home. But the girl wasn't convinced yet. She asked him what if the person would get mad for doing such a horrendous thing, to which Todd replied that anybody would jump at the chance to have sex with her. Now, this man was clearly putting a lot of filthy ideas into an innocent brain. The extent of detail he went into shows that with every sentence, Todd was deriving some kind of intense pleasure. But that's when, out of nowhere, he revealed something big. Todd had absolutely no idea that the girl might be a part of an elaborate sting operation. For even if he had the slightest suspicion, he would have never revealed his past. During one such conversation, Todd told the girl that back in his prime days, he used to be a Cop, and this was not for a brief period, but for 15 long years. And just as he said that, Todd showed us that he even had a vulnerable side. The fear of getting caught almost always haunted him, but it sadly wasn't enough to stop him. In order to keep his little secret, he insisted that nobody should find out about him, for if they did, he would surely go to prison. Well, I'm glad he had a nick of sense left in him, but did it save him from getting caught? After the long chat he had with the girl, Todd drove all the way to the sting house to meet the decoy, but just when he think he was gonna make his next move, Todd decided to drive in circles around the house. Needless to say, this entire turn of events was only getting creepier by the minute, and suddenly there was a change in plan. Instead of pulling into the driveway, Todd seemed to drive away. This strange behavior immediately alerted the cops who chased him down to a halt, and that's when they are horrified by what they discovered. Her arm happened to be a snub-nosed revolver in his front pocket, loaded and ready to fire. Boy, I'm glad the cops never allowed him to walk into the house, for what was a sting operation could have unexpectedly turned deadly. During interrogation, Todd gave more insight into his grim plan for the night. He apparently threatened the cops that he was going to shoot the decoy or perhaps even the crew because he was being set up. Now, before you start assuming any of these were empty threats, let me show you what the cops found in his SUV, including this military assault rifle that was leaning on the passenger seat ready to fire. Oh, just take a look at all the stash he has in there. What the hell was he up to? What did he really plan on doing? I guess we'll never know. But one thing is for sure. It looks like everybody involved in the case that night luckily managed to dodge a bullet. But this next predator got so furious over the simplest of things. I'm sure this guy had some major anger management issues. And what you're about to see is proof of it. Uh, or like we all have our finishes. Here we have a 29-year-old Michael Warner who went by the screen name Can I R You a the setup was happening at Long Beach, California, and this man, an unemployed computer technician, had come to meet a girl who was 13 years old. In his online chat, Warner told the decoy that he wanted to not only hook up with her, but also have a 
sex with her. With no other better reaction to think of, the decoy replied with just four letters. She exclaimed, ouch, but instead of deterring him, it only made him more horny. To ease the decoy out, Warner justified that although painful, it would be a good type of pain. People like this man right here will say anything under the sun to make sure he gets what he wants. And so to materialize his disgusting desires, Warner entered the house to meet the decoy. Once in, he started acting all comfortable with her. The first thing he did was to pour a little bit of the drink for the decoy, or maybe even for himself. But just as he was doing that, in comes Chris Hansen. We have a lot to talk about. Why don't you have a seat? But just take a look at how steady his hands are. That stare that he gives Hansen just as he walks in had me right there. What would he do next? Pick the jar up and smash it over Hansen's head, maybe? Men as deranged as this one are capable of anything. But Warner decided to play it down. When Hansen asked him what he was doing there, Warner casually taking a sip out of the drink blurted out saying, hanging out. But that's not true, is it? When Hansen tried to corner him by reading the chat logs, Warner had the creepiest response ever. I had a guy thing here, okay? Got to got. Yeah. Uh, or like we all have our finishes. But what he said next will make you question his intentions and perhaps also his sanity. It wasn't just limited to Warner spoke about shaving her and cutting her and tasting her blood, and also told that people do some things and that it's normal to have certain fantasies. Not sure in which corner of the world this is normal, but back in his head, it surely was. But Hansen would not let it rest. He kept nudging him to open up. When he asked if it was normal for a 29-year-old man to behave as such, we got to see Warner's other side. For a man who looks so calm and composed all the while, it looks like Hansen had finally touched the wrong nerve. Although he never made a gross move, Warner was seen clenching his fists, and from what can be seen, he was clasping the glass real hard. At some point, it even looked like he was going to throw the glass at Hansen's face, but probably Hansen sensed the danger too. And at that same moment, Hansen revealed his true identity. It takes a lot of guts to stand up against lunatics who are absolutely unpredictable, and Hansen has managed to do just that on several occasions. Once the TV host's identity was out in the open, the camera crew barged into the room, and we all know what happens next. As Warner walked out of the door, he was pinned down by the cops, handcuffed and taken in for interrogation. Warner later confessed that he had planned on consensually the 13 year old and to also doing profound things with her which according to him, but let's not forget the fact that this man was so deranged that referring to the decoy, if she's 13, I'm 12. But this next predator tried to act smart but wound up in his own lies. You thought you were talking to a 102 year old woman who you wanted to that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying Sounds like why we're can't people be honest? So this is the case of a 32-year-old man who had almost gotten caught in the trap set by the crew, but the problem was he was kind of aware of the idea that he could get caught for his actions, or the decoy he was in touch with was a real undercover cop. But how did he get wind of it? So during his chat with the decoy, just to make his stance clear, Edgar made a declaration. He said, I would never meet a female under 18 to do anything s I'm reporting to Yahoo. Please leave me alone. But wait, that's just him trying to save his if at all his luck runs dry and his cover is blown. If you go just by the chat logs, one might assume that this man was here to cause no harm. Edgar is not eager to leave her alone, but he still has his trust issues. In a desperate attempt, he tried to cover all his tracks so there was no proof. But he couldn't get over his fancies. He wanted to talk to the decoy, and that is exactly what happened. Nobody's here. My parents are gone. In the end, after hours and hours of contemplating, Edgar finally finds himself in the doorway of the house. But he could not find the courage to enter. The man had turned himself into a nervous ball of shit as he often looked around trying to clear all of his suspicions. This makes me wonder how strong his desire must have been to meet this young girl to fulfill his fetishes. Throughout the entire interaction, he held his guard up, but in the end, he did fall prey to his perverted desires. Once he entered the house, Edgar wanted to ensure that there was no cameras recording him, and just as he started scanning the place, Chris Hansen made a grand entry from another door. You are a suspicious guy, Rick. I told you there's people here. It looks like all of Edgar's fears were true. First, he didn't want to enter the living area and be seated when Hansen asked him to. And then he started to argue with Hansen, claiming that he had not done anything. However, he kept pacing back and forth because you know, I know, and so does he, that he's so very screwed. But soon things take a turn when Hansen begins to read out the astonishing things Edgar wrote to the girl. But he constantly kept denying any of it and insisted that he had never done anything like this before. 
but the moment he literally sent pictures of his Willie to the decoy had sealed his fate right then and there. But just when you think this nervous wreck would either break down or try to escape, he gets up from the chair and frustratingly moves forward towards Hanson. What was he trying to do? Lunge at him? However, Hanson continued to pester him with some disgusting details from the chat logs, but Edgar continued to act like the victim the entire time. He was repeatedly trying to shift the blame from himself to her in an attempt to get out of the mess. He even made lame statements like, Because I was going to get cigarettes, fill up my tank, and then go fishing. When finally the camera crew walked in and Hanson revealed his true identity, Edgar sat back into the chair and began to speculate his options. He knew that his time had come, and so he blurted out the evidence. He said, My life is screwed. I'm done. My family's done, they're waiting to arrest me, they're waiting to take me to jail. This man tried to talk his way out of his situation by lying and changing the story as much as he could, but he didn't realize that Hansen was actually holding the transcripts from the chat logs the entire time, and lying did not make any sense anymore. But for this next predator, it wasn't his first time getting caught. I guess some people just don't learn from their mistakes. What are you doing here, Michael? I'm sorry. Cyberg was previously caught sending pictures of his genitals to a girl who claimed to be 13. The last time Cyberg was caught, he had told police that he was under treatment for seizures, and he had a scar on his head which was caused by a fall when he was an infant. But that wasn't the only scar Cyberg had. He, however, managed to escape when he pleaded not guilty and trying to seduce an underage child. Unfortunately, the case was still working its way through court, and Cyberg had already laid his eyes on his next victim. Fast forward to eight months later, Cyberg still used the same screen name and still could not snap out of his obsession with 13 year olds. The second time around, he started talking to a decoy who claimed she is 13. Nothing much had changed from before, as he was still interested in and even asked for group but since he got caught before, he tried to make sure he wasn't dealing with an undercover cop. But guess what? Cyber decides to postpone their meeting by a day. Not because he suspected the decoy, but because he had to go to court for the ongoing investigation against him. The next day, however, Cyber walks right into the trap he still hadn't set himself free from. Since he already had an ongoing case against him, the decoy was asked to maintain a safe distance from him. But none of it was required as Hansen swiftly made his way to intercept the man with the scar. Who looks familiar to me. Oops. Stupid! When Hansen asked Cyberg if he remembered who he was, there was obviously no way that he would have forgotten Hansen's face. But wait, did you just forget something? It looks like you made it this far on my video, but forgot to share your support for my channel. To keep amazing videos coming, all you have to do is drop a like and subscribe to my channel for more. And guess what? It's absolutely free! With that out of the way, let's see how Hansen decides to confront Cyberg. When Hansen was showing him the transcripts, it looked like Cyberg was beginning to get annoyed. Every time he lifted his hand, to brush his face or wipe his eyes, I expected Cyberg was onto something fishy. It was clear that Cyberg wanted to leave the house as soon as possible, but Hansen would not allow him to escape without talking. That's when Cyberg started to apologize and admit that he had committed a mistake. But how much of it did he really mean? If he really meant what he said, why do we find him in the same exact situation again? I promise this time, if you rip it up, I'll never come back. It is later revealed that just in the span of 24 hours of going in and out of court, Cyberg had spoken to three other decoys who were also underage. The reason why this man was perceived as dangerous was because he had previously done time for assaulting someone with a bat. Thankfully, this time everyone maintained a safe distance, and the crew made sure there were no tools that Cyberg could get his hands on while at the house. But it looks like, once again, things turned out in his favor. Cyberg was charged with attempted lewd acts on a minor, but yet again, he pleaded not guilty. Apparently, his lawyers claimed that he had mental issues, and for this reason, despite his distorted fantasies, Cyberg is allowed to walk free, and who knows, he might have already contacted another unsuspecting innocent child. So these were the moments when things could have turned physical on the show to catch a predator. How is that the lawyers claim their clients are mentally insane, when in truth, the pedos have an elaborate plan to execute their fantasies? You think we need to rectify our laws so perverts don't escape the hands of justice like Cyberg did? Let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys.